welcome to Building Great Sales Teams, a show dedicated to making sales teams tick, tick, boom. Great sales teams are not recruited, they are built block by block. Let's get to work. All right, guys, we got Austin Montgomery in the trailer here. Uh, Austin is uh, all things entrepreneurism extraordinaire. Yeah. <laughs> For the past, uh, what, 15 years or so? Um, so How old are you now? I'm 32. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I've, I've been working for the last seven, my, my eighth grade summer, so I mean, mm -hmm. about 17 years. Beautiful. Um, you know, and people may ask, like, well, man, how, how do you work full time? Well, I, dude, I like worked, I worked eight hours a day after school pretty much every day. So I was working 40 hours a week. Was that, uh, you know, you usually hear about that from people that work on a farm. Mm -hmm. Where was that? Uh, so I didn't work on a farm. So I actually uh, started out working for a roofing company, mm -hmm. uh, eighth grade summer. That translated into, um, you know, going into my freshman years of high school, um, you know, working after school. But the owner had a deer ranch where mm -hmm. we bred deer, raised deer, stuff like that. And you do all that at night. So I'd work at the roofing company. Uh, like, dude, I, I made all the vinyl signs. Back then, it was the vinyl cut signs. Yeah, People yeah. would stick them and everything, right? Yeah. Uh, I would wrap the vehicles. Uh, uh -huh. I'd work out in the sheet metal shop, wherever I could pretty much get my hands in. Yeah, we just had Brent in here. And yeah. I, do you know Brent? Uh-uh. He uh, has designed it wraps. Okay, yeah. And they've got a, a pretty uh, huge location in Florida that's, yeah. that's killing it out there. Yeah. Uh, he's one of my consulting clients. The technology's come so far, man. Yeah. yeah so, so how we used to do it, we used to have to, like, if you wanted uh, red and blue letters, you had to print out the red and then the blue and then overlap them together and oh then my gosh. tape it back and then put it on the sign and everything like that. So it's come a long way. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but that translated into going into the deer ranch at night. Um, you know, uh, I think when people see an ambitious person, they're like, hey, you want to work? Come on. You know? Yeah, and so exactly. I would finish up at the roofing company, um, and then I would head out to the deer ranch and work deer till 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, sometimes getting done and driving straight to school. This is not normal. Where did it all come from? Um you know, I, honestly, it, it was um, a blessing from my dad, but it was a curse from my dad, too. Okay. Um, Walk us through that. You know, so he didn't, he didn't like, push me to, uh, he didn't push me to work. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have to work because I needed to support my, my family, my siblings or anything. It wasn't right. that kind of situation. Yeah. Um, my just, my dad gave me that, uh, that ethic to work. And so when I started working, I, I didn't play any sports in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, wasn't, you know, I didn't graduate the top 10%. I graduated like the back 10% of my class. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> you know, and so it's like, uh, yeah, I graduated in the 10%, but it was in the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so it was one of those things that, um, he gave me that opportunity. Um, but I, I think the one thing I look back on is, uh, when I say it's a blessing and a curse is I didn't get to have that childhood or that yeah. teenage, those teenage years. Right. Uh, my friends would ask me, hey, you want to go out to this party or whatever? And it's like, man, I'm, I'm working. Yeah. You know, so I missed out on a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking back now and I, looking where I am, yeah. um, I, I don't s say it to be mean, but I see where I'm at in my life and where a lot of my friends are at. Mm -hmm. And no judgment, you yeah. know. Um, but I, I see where, it, where it's progressed me. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I thank my dad for it, and I also am like, curse my dad for it sometimes, <laughs> you know, because yeah. miss, I've missed those years, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm gaining it back. You're, you're in, in the scope of your entire life, you'll probably make that same choice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, yeah, you do look back, and I was the same way. I, I, I had a chip on my shoulder, so I wanted to prove that I was going to be better than my whole family. Mm -hmm. And um, so I didn't have the college years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, high school, yeah, I did the sports and all that stuff. I was blessed with my aunt, and she took really good care of me and, and provided for me. But uh, going into college, I was like, I've got to do something with this opportunity she's given me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, I didn't have those, like, years where I did a bunch of stupid stuff, yeah. got in trouble, you know what I mean, all that. I was always 
somewhat responsible from an early yeah, age, you know, straight in there. as I could be. Yeah. But no. Um, so uh, tell us about your company right now. Um, so I, I started my, my wife and I actually started our company in December of 2020. Okay. Uh, the Roof Co. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a it's a commercial and residential roofing company. Mm-hmm. Um, we primarily focus our our main line of work is commercial, mm-hmm. though uh, we still do residential. It's just something we don't target and chase. Yeah. Um, but you know, if people call me and say, "Hey, man, I want my house done," yeah, right. we'll do it. Yeah, we'll know? knock it out. Yeah. I, I, I want to point out something. Um, there's roofers, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, and then there's roofers that are doing delicate roofs on top of historic buildings Mm -hmm. and doing things that like are revolutionary in the roofing industry. Yeah. And that's you. Yeah. And and man, and I hear it all the time. Like I hear people say like, man, I'm a commercial roofer, um, but they're putting shingles on an apartment complex and no, no knock to that. Right. You know, uh, yeah, that is considered, you know, uh, commercial roofing, roofing, uh, but you're taking the shingles and putting them on a, a, same type of application, just a bigger building, right? So talk about what you guys are doing. Like, um, So we focus more on government contracts, mm-hmm. uh, schools, uh, commercial buildings like flat roofs, mm-hmm. you know, this big arena here. Yeah. Um, like I, I had a, an expo center that collapsed uh, down in Georgetown. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, I think that was the one that I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah from the snow that hit uh, Snowmageddon in Texas. Yeah. yeah. And, and we got to rebuild that, you know, and so, but that takes a lot of uh, know-how and experience mm-hmm. to be able to do something like that. When you do a project like that, is your whole company on that project? No. no okay. No. Um, we have dedicated, um, we have a dedicated production manager who then has superintendents under them. Mm-hmm. Um, and those superintendents are usually dedicated to those individual projects. Gotcha. Um, sometimes they're dedicated to multiple projects depending on the scope of the work. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much where that's at. And you know, we focus on the historic side. I've got um, three historic projects in the in the works right now. That's awesome. Um, and I believe three of them will. Uh, so we're part of the AGC, the Associated General Contractors, um, mm-hmm. as a as a subcontractor. And so what that does is they have the outstanding construction awards and. Mm-hmm. Um, a previous company I worked for, we won uh, an outstanding construction award mm-hmm. uh, for that. And these three projects I have now uh, will most likely. They're all up uh, for it. They're all, they'll all be up for having an outstanding construction award. So, that's badass. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's and and th- that's, that's the piece I love taking in. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, you can really sink your teeth into it. Yes. You know, and it's more than just, like you said, slapping shingles on yeah, a roof. Yeah, slapping shingles on a roof. Because that's all about volume. Yes. What you're doing, and there's an, it's almost an art form, right? It is. Um, you know, and a lot of people will ask me, like, man, I want to get into commercial roofing. Uh, I want to learn TPO. Well, man, there's more to TPO. There's, there's, there may be 10, 15 different systems in TPO, mm-hmm. you know, from mechanically attached to fully adhered to, you know, a ballast system. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many different levels to commercial roofing to actually learn and i mean it's taken me you know the 17 years 16 17 years i've been doing this and i'm still learning things yeah. you know because uh, roofing was revolutionizing and you know coming up with new technology and so mm-hmm. i'm constantly learning and you know when somebody says they want to come into it it's yeah. like man it, it doesn't just happen overnight you know so tell me about why you decided to start to, the business i know you were in business with your family before mm-hmm. And uh, you you had this moment where you decided you wanted to go into business for yourself. Um, you, you know, it was so backstory. Um, mm-hmm. I was working for a major roofing outfit um, and was doing really well. And some things happened there, and that's okay. And so mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I left. I didn't have a plan. And I told my dad, I was like, hey, man, I'm going to start a roofing company. And at that time, he was semi-retired doing some commercial projects. Mm-hmm. Um general contracting work. Yeah. Uh, he'd work six months out of the year and fish the other six months. And right. it was great for him. Yeah. Um, he was out of the business. Yeah. He was out of the business, yeah. you know, now he was in it when he was working, when they had a job going, right. it was him working. Cause it was only him, you know? Gotcha. Um, and so he's like, Hey, I've already got the insurance and everything like that. I've got the company form. Just come on with me and mm-hmm. you know, we'll, we'll split the profit, whatever. You yeah. Know, I'll give you a percentage of the profit. Yeah. Uh, no salary, anything like that, no benefits. Um, and 
So the first year, um, I think we did about a million. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of quit selling and doing jobs and just you let were me selling do it. now. Yeah, yeah. So I was selling and we did about a million. How many how many uh, salespeople did you have? Was it just it was you? just me? Just you. Okay. And um, so the crazy thing is, is my dad didn't have any systems and processes in place. Like right. everything cool. was in a notebook. Yeah. Like their taxes, everything was in a no spiral notebook. Yeah, seriously. You know, it's like. To us, that's Greek, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of impressive. It is. To be able to have that discipline to write in that notebook yeah. all the time. Because, yeah. man, if 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 my bookkeeper couldn't see the charge in yeah. my bank account, yeah. like, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so and he had a few spreadsheets that he did on, like, yeah. Excel. And so it, it was cool like that. Um, you know, and so... <laughs> I came on and I was the salesman. I was the production guy. I mm-hmm. was the marketer. I was, uh, I did the invoices. I mean, right. I did it all. And yeah. we did about a million that year and I made like 80 grand. Mm-hmm. Second year, I think we did like 1.3 or something like that, 1.5. And um, I made like 120. Yeah. And uh, I had a, a, a shift in my mindset um because there was me um my dad and stepmom and then my brother and mm-hmm. so you got three family units right yeah um, not so much so then you know my brother was still pretty young mm-hmm. um i was still young but i had a girlfriend uh, which is now my wife but i realized that like hey if i don't do something because i'm working 60 80 100 hours a week to support three family units yeah uh, we've got to scale this business because it's putting so much on me Right. Right. And so I actually told my dad, I was like, hey, um, give me a salary. Mm -hmm. And I actually took a pay cut. Uh, I took a $52,000 salary. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, no benefits. Uh, They paid paid for my fuel uh, and my truck payment. Right. Um, But I took pretty much a 50% pay cut. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did that for two years so we could start putting money back to... Uh, hire people and start scaling the business. It's crazy. Um, and so I stuck it out for two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went through a lot of people, right? Now I wouldn't say a lot of people. We went through yeah. some people. Um, and fast forward two years past that, uh, I was general managing the company. Again, I was wearing a lot of hats. Mm-hmm. Um, but in a six year span, we grew the company from, a, you know, doing half a million before I got there to. I think we had 12 million in contracts and uh, 9 million in production in 2019. Wow. So, um, turns out you were uh, you were able to scale. You yeah, know? we were able to scale. It turns out you're uh, a visionary. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess, was there some validation at that point? You know what I mean? Like, uh, For me, no. Gotcha. No. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. And... Um, no fault to my dad and, and his parenting skills. I love my dad. Yeah. Um, but he is who he is and he parents how he parents and he loves how he loves. Right. Right. Um, I was always seeking that approval from my dad, Mm -hmm. uh, in, in 2019, right before COVID hit. Um, so in, it was like January or February of 2020, I think, uh, I went to one of John Paramore's events and, um, was that your first event like that? That was my first event to ever go to something mm-hmm. like that. And so I went to his event um, and we talked about core values and your why, right? Your mm-hmm. why in life and why yeah. are you doing this and what do you want out of life? And dude, I was on fire. Um, totally on fire. Mm-hmm. And I came back and I had a, I pulled everybody in the office, including my parents. Yeah. I was like, all right, guys, we're going to figure out our why. What's your why? You know, not just business wise, but personally wise. Right. And it was a shock to everybody. Yeah. Because they had been so comfortable. They'd never been around that before, right? They're comfortable in life. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to set this new trend of, hey, we're going to scale this thing. We're going to figure out our one. We're all going to be great. Yeah. And not everybody wants that. And that's right. okay. Um, and so when I pushed on that, um, I realized that we all weren't in alignment. And mm-hmm. when I say we all, I meant my family. Yeah. We weren't in alignment with where my vision was mm-hmm. um, for the future and where their vision was and what they wanted to do. So Thomas Keenan talks about it all the time. Uh, Thomas Keenan's the COO of uh, Break Free Academy. And 
he talks about when you start investing in yourself and developing yourself and going to events like you went to with uh, John Paramore's, which, by the way, is an amazing human. Yeah. Um, it creates this uh, catechism, right? And so you're developing, 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 and then, you know, everybody else that's not there is mm -hmm. staying the same. That gap. Yeah, it creates that gap. And so you experience that gap firsthand. Yeah. Yep. So where did you go from there? Um, so, I, I, like I said, I realized that, the, that their vision wasn't my vision. And, again, no fault to them, and that's okay. Um, you know, they didn't want to grow. They mm -hmm. didn't want to have that headache. That, they didn't want to have that um, challenge. That challenge, right? Yeah. Um, and so I offered to, I started having conversations about buying the company. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had those conversations, uh, for most of 20, 2020, we had some really hard conversations, um, because I realized where like my brother was, uh, in wanting the business, mm -hmm. um, where, what he saw for the future of it, where my dad saw it. Um, I started having the conversations because at, at where it was, was if something happened to my parents, it split between me and my brother 50, 50. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I wasn't okay with that. Yeah. Were you going to build something that you felt like, you know, you were right. The major builder in it. Right. Right. And then all of a sudden, and, and I'm not going to take away from them and say that they weren't a part of it. They were right. a part of it. Um, but y'all, y'all had different visions. We had different visions. Yeah. Correct. Um, and so from there, you know, um, we started negotiations or conversations, I should say, and that took about a year long stint. And we went through family therapy and business therapy. And mm -hmm. um, at the end, we w couldn't reach an agreement. Um, and there was a lot of tough conversations, a lot of screaming and yelling sometimes. And yeah. Finally, I just told my dad, I said, I think it's best that I part ways. Yeah. Uh, and that was right about the time um, my father in law. Uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Oh man, uh, my wife's dad. That, that puts a lot of, a lot into perspective. Yeah, and that so that was November of 2020, mm -hmm. um, and then December. Um, I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but uh, we had a pretty big falling out between me and my dad mm -hmm. and, and and my family, and um, we spent all of Christmas at MD Anderson with my father in law. Mm -hmm. um, but I decided to go ahead. My wife and I we resigned from our positions. Um, started our company and I want to point out that first of all you recognize that hey we're going in different directions and you know it, it, it doesn't matter every, you know because so many people get stuck on to what I've done mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and I need to continue to get paid for what I did last year mm -hmm. and that's not how it works it doesn't no. work that way in entrepreneurship it doesn't work that way with your salary no 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 employer is going to pay you next year for work you did last year right so too much of us hang on to that. Mm. And then not only that, but your family is a comfortable place. Mm. And so the idea that your family has this business, it's a business you want to be in, you want to make an impact in, and you've poured into it for, at this point, five years? Six years. Six years. Um, and then the idea of walking away from that, but you had a standard you wanted to set at that point. You had a vision mm. that you wanted to go after. And, and, and so you did, and you, not only did you do that, you did it in the middle of this adversity going on with yeah. uh, your family, yeah. with your father-in-law, and, and, and now you're about to make a decision to do what in the middle of all that? So made the decision, um, both of my wife and I made the decision, mm -hmm. hey, we're, December was our, we're starting our company. Mm -hmm. uh, walked away from our jobs. And, and let me take that back. I didn't just walk away from from my family's business, my agreement to them was, hey, look, I will I will stay and finish out my projects. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna expect you to pay me a salary or anything. I don't want commission or anything, but I will stay and help finish these projects, these government projects, because I know more about them than anybody, right? Yeah. Um, and you, you're, at that point, it was Austin Montgomery's reputation. Yes. You know what I mean? You yes. knew you had to finish that out. Exactly, mm -hmm. and so, Started my company. Um, we went through some hardships. Uh, I'd be, to be honest with you, my family didn't think I was really going to do it. Mm -hmm. They thought it was just a phase, but I ended up doing it, starting a company. And I in no way want to skip over everything you've been through, but in the interest of time, we need to fast forward to where you are now. So fast forward <laughs> on that. So I, I left, 
Um, worked for about six months with them, doing stuff on the side for them, you right. know, finishing those projects, finishing no pay. Projects. Started our projects, and, um, you know, we... And I, I won't skip this piece because okay. this is where the interesting piece comes in. Okay. Is December, we spent Christmas at MD Anderson. Mm -hmm. January 1st, we lost my wife's grandpa. January 2nd, we lost my wife's grandma. Mm -hmm. And January 9th, we lost her dad. Damn. So through the adversity of losing two family members in 2020 and then three at the beginning of 2021, mm -hmm. plus leaving our jobs was, was crazy for the both of us. Yeah. Plus, also still helping another company that I wasn't getting compensation from. It's crazy. Yeah. Adversity was crazy. But it was perspective, too. Yes. This is like, yeah. my word and my purpose is what really matters. Absolutely. Because, you know, I'm surrounded by the ending of things. Yes. You know what I mean? In the beginning of, you know, their, their new life, yeah. right? Yeah. But... It just it puts everything in so much perspective. So yeah. you must have just not not gone back on everything you were doing. You must have just like head first. Yeah, head first now. Yeah, head first, and um, so we kicked off. And I think it's also God saying, "Do you really want this?" Yeah. Or as soon as you hit some adversity, yeah, you go back to the comfort zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can, can make easily gotten. You can make a hundred grand a year. Yeah. Your your wife's going, or you guys are going through all this stuff. And it's all happening in the first month of the year. You could easily, I'm sure, mend that relationship, make that hundred grand again. You know what I mean? And at least you don't have to worry about financials, bills, yeah. all a new brand new company, right? You know, but right. you didn't. No. Um, so man, we we hit the ground running, um, mm -hmm. and luckily because I've built such great relationships yeah. um, over the years. Again, as an as as an, even as an employee, I built relationships with bankers, relationships with our insurance agents, mm -hmm. everything like that's so critical. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me and propelled me to be able to do things, uh, do jobs that most new companies don't have the ability to do because right. they don't have the line of credit, they don't have the insurance, they don't have the banker to back them. Right. Uh, so that was very, you know, impactful for our business. And, you know, we, we grew, we did a lot of revenue uh, mm -hmm. in our first year of business and you know in our in a year and a half we've started five different companies yeah and so it it's it's been a wild ride so i don't need you know the show is building great sales teams yeah. but i don't need it to be about building great sales teams all the time right mm -hmm. because this is an amazing story first of all and and thank you for sharing it and the full transparency yeah. you know that's hard yeah um but i want i do want to point out something for my listeners, you know, and it's that building the relationship is more important than the product or the business. Yes, absolutely. And in the way that that translates into your sales teams is building the relationship with your people is more important than the product or the business, you know, and anytime that you're doing that, even halfway, you're going to get so much more out of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and this is a testament to that because you operated with integrity in your business and they knew who you were. And so it didn't matter what name you had on your hat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was Austin Montgomery. Yeah. And so um, I guess where are y'all at today because of that? Um, you know, so like I said, we've, we've got five different businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we own some commercial property. We started making investments. Um, but our first year in business, we, we did 3.6 million. <laughs> Um, and I was, again, I had to step back into wearing a bunch of hats. Yeah. You know, I was the sales guy. I was the estimator yeah. production. Mm -hmm. um, but we did $3.6 in our roofing company, mm -hmm. uh, which propelled me to be able to make the investments of property and uh, starting other companies. And yeah, so you diversified. Yeah, diversified. Strategically started a general contracting company. Um, just to bring in additional revenue right? for the roofing side, honestly. Yeah, because you, you get the roof, and then they need something else. They're asking you for it. Yeah. And you want to be able to provide. In insurance jobs, you know, you get you heard the, the term O&P, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if I go in as a roofing contractor working with the insurance company and there's multiple trades, I don't get the 20% overhead and profit mm -hmm. on roofing. But if I go in as the general contracting company and I sub it out to a roofing company, yeah. I get the overhead and profit, right? Makes sense. But they don't know that I own the roofing company, too. Right, right. You know? So it was yeah. a strategic play like that, too, just different things. Yeah, and 
Austin just dropped a dime for you guys. So yeah, you yeah. better write that down, <laughs> especially you guys that are roofers. Yeah. So uh, no, and then that that is a lot of my consulting clients and um, the people that listen to this podcast. A yeah. lot of roofers. Yeah. And uh, so that so that's huge. So what's what's next for you guys? You've you've got the referral app that you guys are beta testing right now. Yep. That's exciting. Yep. yep. So we've got the referral app. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't go into great detail about it um, till we get ready to start yeah, keep dropping it. On low, low. It. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a referral app. Just know that it's going to change. So how you're, you're, okay, are. you're a construction guy. What, what business do you have in technology? Uh, I, Say it. I don't. I, no, no, I mean, well, actually, I, I think do. what I you do. wanted to say is I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't give a shit what people think I should be doing in yeah. technology, but I'm going to do it. You know, so really, really, honestly, I had a problem okay. um, and I had to figure out a solution for it. And mm-hmm. in my it's mind, I was like, hey, business exactly. Starts. I was like, hey, here's my solution to it. Mm-hmm. How do I create it? How do I monetize it? Mm-hmm. And so now we're going to create it. There's nothing else like this out there. I've done the research on it. Yeah. And so why not capitalize on it? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it, when people say, like, hey, I can't be in technology because I don't know about it. Well, you know about a problem. Mm-hmm. And typically your brain has the solution to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you find that solution to it and you can monetize it, you're now in that business. Yeah. You know? It's so. funny. I My my staff laughs at me all the time because I have these uh, – all these big ideas and the way I think things should work. And I know because I've been in business for 12 years now, I know that it can happen. Yeah. I'm not the person to do it. And I yeah. need my, my staff to figure out how to do it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And the, and they're just, it just trips them out every time. The I buy, visionary piece. Yeah. I put it all, I put all my faith in them because I yeah. know it can be done and they're going to make it happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I'm going to walk away. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, you know? I need y'all to help me figure this out. Yeah. But you're also that integrator too, though. Yeah. You, you've got that, you're like that rare unicorn of uh-huh. having yeah. both pieces to you. I'm, like, that's not me. I found out a couple of months ago that, uh, you know, I put Wayne through the EOS test mm-hmm. and he's actually a high integrator. Really? And what I learned and what I learned about that is uh, you, you, in my mind, an integrator was always the uh, the systems person, mm. the person that can get in the weeds and see how it's all supposed to work together. But that's actually the visionary. The integrator is a amazing coach. Yeah, the integrator takes what you've built and scales it yep. because they're an amazing coach. And Wayne is, I can't even touch him when it comes to being a counselor. Right, he's an amazing fucking counselor, and uh, and it, it made so much sense. He was like a eighty nine. Oh wow! On the integrator yeah. scale, I mean that's that's huge, and that's why we've worked so well together because mm. I have this vision of how the system should work and the company should scale. He puts it together, and 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 yeah, he's able to say, "Hey, this isn't working. That's working. You know, we need to tweak this." And then I make the tweak happen, and then he he goes in and he coaches the people up. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. it it works really well together. Yeah. So. You've got a lot of products that you can offer our our listeners or anybody in general. Um, why don't you walk us through those and then how we can reach out to you to, to get those? Yeah, and, and first and foremost, I want to point out too that one, my, my number one thing is I, I'm, I'm a husband and, and a dad. Mm-hmm. Um, my businesses fall in line after that. Right. Um, I think you've seen me on my social mm-hmm. media and stuff. And so my kids are very important. My wife's very important. Absolutely. So I won't discredit them. And I, I, I got to give love to them because that's what I'm doing this for. Well, and I, and I love what you said. Me and my wife made the decision yeah. to go into business when, you know, I was a young husband and whenever I went into business, um, she actually asked me not to. Yeah. And I did it anyways, yeah. you know, <laughs> and we look back and that was a good decision because yeah. she was a young wife too. Right. Right. And it was just fear, yeah. you know? Um, but I, I wish I could have instilled that confidence in her first mm-hmm. and then I, we made the decision together. So yeah. I commend you for that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've got the commercial and residential roofing company. I've got the commercial general contracting company. Um, obviously the investment company that we buy properties with. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we started a mobile ice cream bar. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. That's a pretty cool little piece. I, I think more people have been interested, especially the women of course. Uh, here. They've been ice more cream. interested in the ice cream. Who's not interested in the yeah, ice cream? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it, what, what's crazy is and what sucked is I, 
just finished 75 hard Friday. Uh-huh. Uh, and so the whole time we've had got this trailer built and started. Mm-hmm. And we, I've got all this ice cream at my office. I can't have any of it. <laughs> <laughs> but now you can. I, now, now I can. Congrats on that, by the uh, way. Yeah. 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 And Y'all haven't done 75 hard yet. I highly recommend it. It's any for sellers program. Yeah. Download the app. It's like a $5 app. Yeah. He's, he's not yeah. trying to make money from yeah. it. He's trying to make impact. Yeah. All right, brother. How do how do people reach out to you? Um, so I'm on all social medias: um, Instagram, uh, Austin the Texas Roofer, and then obviously on Facebook, Austin Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Uh, LinkedIn again, Austin Montgomery, and then uh, TikTok. I think it's uh, the Roofco Waco. You getting on some TikTok? What are you oh, yeah, on man. TikTok? Man, I. I Dude, I, I post dumb stuff. <laughs> you know, I, 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 dude, it's I, TikTok. It's yeah. TikTok, man. And honestly, like on all my social media, I, mm-hmm. dude, I hardly ever try to sell people anything. Like, I, it's just the real, authentic me, my yes. family, my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's, I don't, that, that's what gets the most engagement. Yeah, people, yeah. people want to connect with people. Yeah. You know, and then, my, and then you happen to be able to take care of the commercial roof. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, ice cream and. All kinds of stuff. Well, you saw me doing the, like the, I was like back in the beginning of the year doing, uh, riding my Peloton. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, doing the Peloton and yeah. doing my, like my live videos lives, and stuff like yeah. that. Just something different, man. That's a great know? idea, man. I, uh, I need to get a treadmill in our garage for Alicia. Put it in your bedroom. Yeah, That's what do, I did. We do have a big bedroom. <laughs> but, um, anyways, uh, I would love to do something like that. I, I, yeah. I like I always think like I want to do a live when I'm doing something that I don't need to think about. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, TikTok's huge. Uh, th- this soul will do clips of this on TikTok yeah. for sure. So. That's cool, man. That's yeah, cool. That's where it's at. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you see, you hear Gary V like say all all the time like mm-hmm. if you're not posting on TikTok right now, like yeah, you're gonna get left way behind. Exactly. So all right. Well, we got the uh, MDM. Yes, million dollar, we do. We're at the Million Dollar Mastermind event. And we're in a podcast trailer that Patrick Bolanos built for me. It's amazing. It is fucking awesome. That did you have this vision for this? I'm assuming. No, he he did. Okay, so he had this vision, yeah. right? And he was like, "I want to make it into a business. I want to take it to events like this, right. and then rent it out." Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so he puts the trailer out there. He posts it or whatever. He's like, hey, "If anybody's interested in uh, buying something like this, I can build like it." Like before for he finished the sentence, he's like, "I'm." Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm me. in. Yeah, and not only am I interested, I want that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, sold. I want the first one sold. You can yeah. have it. So that's so. Cool, yeah, man. we're gonna see like ten of them at MDM yeah. next year. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's gonna be like, "Where do I yeah. park my podcast?" Yeah. Trailer? <laughs> can I get a parking spot here and Absolutely. hookups? So. Well, brother, I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, the alignment is real. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know we're going to do something together in, in, in the Absolutely. future when I'm not running around like a chicken with my head cut hey, off. Hey, man. It, hey, it's <laughs> part of it. That's part of it. All right. So. I appreciate you coming on. Appreciate brother. you too, man. Let's get building. Yep. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Building Great Sales Teams. We sure do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you consume podcasts. This way you'll get notifications as new episodes become available. Remember, Great sales teams are not recruited. They are built block by block. Until next time.